Hi everyone, Bad Wolf here. I'm back with another Doctor Who guide video, and today I'm going to be talking about some Doctor Who that never made it to TV screens, which is something that I'm hoping to turn into a sort of sub-series of my Doctor Who guides. I'm going to kick it off with some of the most famous unproduced Doctor Who, The Lost Season 23. So, as I'm sure we all know by now, Doctor Who first began on November 23rd, 1963. Something that was always impressive to me about the classic series was that it ran regularly, almost entirely uninterrupted, from that November evening onward. Doctor Who ran for a streak of over 20 years until the end of season 22, Colin Baker's first season as the Doctor. At that point, it was announced that, for budgetary reasons, the program would be suspended for 18 months to allow new dramas to be produced in its place. Doctor Who is to take a rest. The BBC announced today that the Time Lord, who's been on our screens for some 22 years now, will be off the air for 18 months. The Doctor Who Appreciation Society is up in arms. They've called the decision horrifying and staggering. Chris Lowe reports. The announcement took everyone by surprise. Doctor Who is one of BBC Television's longest-running series, and at the moment it's going out on Saturday evenings on BBC One with an audience of over 7 million. But the BBC says it wants to make a lot of new drama programmes, and it can't afford to do that and produce Doctor Who as well. So the Doctor, currently played by Colin Baker, is to be rested for the first time in over 20 years. The decision to temporarily suspend the show was met with both shock and outrage by fans of the show and the production staff alike. Fans were... passionate in their outcry, to say the least. Now, I know this isn't the topic of this video, but I don't know when the hell else I'm going to have time to mention this, so I'll just quickly discuss it here. Keep in mind, this was in 1985. So, logically, the fan response to the news of the Doctor's suspension was to make a We Are The World-style charity record called Doctor in Distress. Yeah, it was... let's just say the passion for raising money for cancer research was admirable, but the record itself and accompanying video are... there's no other word for it. Laughable. The resulting product was so bad the BBC refused to play it on their radio stations, and Ian Levine, a record producer and prominent fan of the show who even wrote the song, I might add, would publicly denounce it not long afterward. So, if you want a piece of horrifically bad 1980s Doctor Who fan media, Doctor in Distress is probably the way to go. But that's enough about that, I don't want to discuss it anymore. Getting back on track, the sudden suspension took Doctor Who's production staff entirely by surprise, as they'd already begun pre-production and season 23 was already well underway. Scripts were written, directors were hired, and in some cases even locations were booked. But it all had to be thrown out. And that's what we're going to look at today, the season 23 that may have been. There are six stories that were to comprise the lost season 23, with varying degrees of material produced for each one. Some had full scripts completed, where others barely exist beyond a working title. We're going to take a look at what's known about each one. Season 23 was to have opened with The Nightmare Fair, which was set to be filmed at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the UK's most iconic amusement park. The Nightmare Fair was to have been written by Graham Williams, a former producer of the show during the Tom Baker years, and directed by Matthew Robinson, one of the regular stable of directors at the time. The story was actually so far into production that the final episode of season 22 even originally led directly into it. This is the actual final scene of Revelation of the Daleks. I know somewhere that is truly tranquil, peaceful, restful. Panacea for the cares of mine. Can't we go somewhere fun? Fun? Oh, I suppose anywhere will be peaceful after Necros. All right. I'll take you to... See, he was initially going to say, I'll take you to Blackpool. 
but the scrapping of season 23 and the lack of time to film a new ending forced them to end it with this weird mid-sentence cutoff. Basically, the Nightmare Fair would have featured the Doctor and Perry initially visiting Blackpool for a nice vacation, but would encounter strange happenings around the park which were the work of the Celestial Toymaker, a villain which the Doctor first faced long, long ago in the William Hartnell serial of the same name. Amazingly, Michael Goff, the actor who first played the role of the Toymaker in his sole appearance, was slated to reprise the role again over 20 years later. Much like in the Toymaker's first outing, the Doctor and Perry would have been forced to face off in deadly games for their survival. The finale apparently culminated in the Doctor being forced to play a cosmic video game to determine the fate of the planet itself. While it never saw TV screens, Graham Williams would later write a novelized adaptation of the Nightmare Fair scripts for the Target Books range. Big Finish Productions would also later produce an audio adaptation in 2009 to kick off their range of Lost Stories audio dramas, which are all based on stories written for the TV series, but which went unproduced for one reason or another. The second serial of season 23 was to have been The Ultimate Evil, written by Wally K. Daly, who had never written for Doctor Who before, and directed by longtime Doctor Who crew veteran Fiona Cumming. The plot was to have been a story set on a resort planet, where a villain had used some kind of mind control ray to turn good people into raging killers. This story, like The Nightmare Fair, was later novelized for Target Books by its original writer, but beyond that, it's never had any other adaptations. Third in the season was to have been Mission to Magnus. Philip Martin, writer of Vengeance on Varos and the eventual writer of the serial Mind Warp for the real version of season 23, was to have written it, and Ron Jones, director of a number of 80s Doctor Who stories, was slated to direct. The central monsters were to be the Ice Warriors, who had a plot to alter the tilt of the planet Magnus in order to make it habitable for them as a new homeworld. The story would have also featured the return of Syl, the antagonist of Vengeance on Varos. Martin would of course write a different return of Syl when he wrote Mind Warp. Like The Nightmare Fair, Mission to Magnus has both a target novelization and a big finish audio drama adaptation. Next was to come a story known only by the working title, Yellow Fever and How to Cure It. This story never even got as far as the script writing stage, but the broad details were that it was to be set in Singapore and would feature the return of the Autons. It was also discussed that it might include either the Master or the Rani, perhaps even both. So far, Yellow Fever is one of only two of the cancelled Season 23 stories not to have an adaptation in any other medium. It never got a Target novelization, nor has Big Finish taken a crack at it. I think this is a real shame, as the set pieces involved all sound interesting. It's rare that Earth-based Doctor Who stories happen outside the UK, so the setting of Singapore has interesting potential, not to mention the return of the long-absent Autons, who would continue to remain shelved until the start of the new series. Next on the block was The Hollows of Time. It was planned to be written by Christopher H. Bidmead and directed by Matthew Robinson. It would have featured the return of the Tractators, the central monsters of the fifth Doctor serial Frontios, which was also written by Bidmead. This one was never novelized, but it did get a big finish adaptation in 2010. The season was to have closed with a story that had the working title The Children of January. It was written by Michael Feeney Callan, who would have been another writer new to the series. This is the other Lost Season 23 story that has never been adapted into any other media, because virtually nothing is known about it. Pretty much all that's ever come to light about the story was this brief description from Callan's personal website. Ahem. I wrote a two-parter called The Children of January. It was to be a season closer, not a series termination. But the BBC decided in mid-season that the show had run its course, and in the mid-80s, I think they were right. But I loved my episode, which was delivered late in 1985. I created a race of runaway proto-humans called the Zeros, sort of human bees, of which I still have the fondest nightmares. The Children of January, incidentally, refers to renegade outcasts of a dawning parallel universe civilization that was abandoned. So, yeah, that's basically all there is. This one sounds like it would have been... weird. But as for now, The Children of January is the most mysterious of the Season 23 stories. It's unlikely, but perhaps someday Callan might be persuaded into adapting his script for Big Finish, or even as one of the pseudo-target novelizations that's come out recently. That about covers it for The Lost Season 23. Of course, when the 18-month hiatus was up, Doctor Who returned to screens with a new Season 23 in the form of the extended story Trial of a Time Lord, one of the more experimental seasons in Doctor Who history. 
And as I'm sure we all know, Doctor Who would be put on hiatus again following season 26, and then ultimately cancelled, marking the end of the classic series. However, much like season 23, there were planned stories in the works for the never-realized season 27, which is a topic I'm going to do another video on soon. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great day.